windy Mogainga conservation area is a very, very important site. We call it the Pleistocene Refugia. In the past, during those volatile times of great geological events, of climatic changes, it's a place that saved wildlife. That's how special it is for the world. It is one of the biggest privileges I've ever had in my life to be able to be close to the endangered mountain gorillas in Uganda. You're tracking through the forest, you're looking around, you're trying to get that first glimpse. And for me, the look in the eyes, I've never seen anything like it before. It's just something extremely powerful to watch. This incredible ecosystem is at risk of disappearing if it's not taken care of. We just must do everything we can to help these creatures survive and thrive. They live in a salad bowl. They don't need us to provide food for them. They need us to provide space for them so that they can get on with their own lives in peace. We know for sure that species are disappearing. Habitats are being destroyed. We've studied how these animals live, how these ecosystems thrive, but that's not the problem. The problem is how the communities neighboring this biodiversity reacts towards the biodiversity surrounding them. People adjacent to the national park, they do not have enough resources to sustain their lives. So they will pressurize on the few resources in the national park so that they can make up for survival. That's why you find that people are encroaching on the park. You find that people end up poaching because you want to put some food on the plate. What gorilla conservation is doing is to improve on the potential of these people of gaining their own food. And that is by training them, providing them with tools. Create alternatives without depending on the forest resources. Most of the beekeepers who are in this area, they use also to affect the park. We want to divide it into two because we want to make two. Every month we train five groups. So what you do, you get They come here, we give them training in beekeeping management. Assume this is an empty hive. And these beehives help as a livelihood project for the community. At the same time, controlling problem animals which move out of the park to cause damages in the community. It's all about the empowerment and knowledge and education for these communities and the far reaching effects of an alternative way of life. Before, they didn't know the usefulness of conserving wildlife. These are guys who used to spend most of their time in the forest watching animals. They left their homes without knowing that they would come back alive. They had to change their lifestyle from poachers to agriculturists. We took on educating them, building capacity, giving them implements. There is a great change if you compare life when we were still using the park than today. Now, their kids are growing up going, I want to be a ranger. 
I want to go study at McGarry University, I want to go and study ecology, or I want to study wildlife. A cycle has been broken. Community empowerment is very critical. Without them, it's going to be very difficult for us to make progress in terms of conservation. And when you look at Burundi, the threat levels are low. The gorilla population is growing because the communities are benefiting from conservation.